A gunman takes cops on a high-speed chase. I'm behind that robbery suspect. It starts at 95 miles per hour on a busy freeway. I'm at eastbound at Hewlin. I need another unit with me. Turns into a foot pursuit in the brush and ends with a Wild West shootout. We got an officer down. But only one will live and one will die. It was a sunny afternoon in Fort Worth, Texas. But things are about to turn dark and deadly for the police. You got units that can assist U.S. Marshals following an ag robbery suspect. Silver Ford, what escape? Escape. Officer Matt Pierce was on routine patrol when he hears the radio call. It's supposed to be armed and dangerous. The suspect is as bad as they come. Ed McIver Sr. has a long rap sheet and is wanted for stabbing his ex-wife in the eye with a pencil. And Junior's in the car riding shotgun. 243 permission for a third of the pursuit. Matt's nearby, so he radios headquarters asking to join the chase. He's now the number three car in hot pursuit of the McIvers. A lot of traffic at Horn, a lot of traffic at Horn, I can see it. I pick up my radio and I hear the pursuit. Back at the police academy, training instructor Brandy Camper is listening to the radio calls with anxious anticipation. I hear Matt's voice, and I knew it was Matt because he's my friend, and we're listening to the pursuit, and everybody's adrenaline's going up, and you're just like, go, Matt, get him, you know, and we're, we're listening to the other officers. We're like, come on, come on, and it just keeps going. The chase gets even more dangerous when the suspect pulls his SUV into a shopping center. He now takes cops on a zigzag ride through the parking lot. Once he's in the back alley, he wildly speeds up again. They're going to fail to yell, they're going to take off on me. A gate stops McIver. So he makes a U-turn and now races so close past the officers, he nearly sideswipes them. Now McIver is going at breakneck speed in the parking lot. We're in pursuit. We're going to Hewland. The shopping center is potentially filled with moms and their children. Tyver makes a hard turn onto a busy street. Southbound, southbound Hewland. Just ahead, Matt is waiting. I see it. He throws out stop stakes to try and slice the tires, but McIver must have seen Matt throw them out, so he switches into oncoming traffic. Now he's back on the freeway. And then he takes an unscheduled exit, driving right down an embankment and onto a side road. But Matt is one intersection ahead of him. He's now the number one car in the chase. It's up to him to stop McIver. Now they're in the rural part of Fort Worth. McIver slows down, turns into the dusty driveway of a farm, and then... Bailing, bailing, coming up the hill. When Matt says that these two guys bail out of the car and that both of them have guns, the SWAT officer leaves the office that we're in and heads down to the SWAT office to grab the team and head to the scene. The two suspects are loose. Matt goes after Ed Sr. Stop right there! Follow me! Matt is running all out until he hits a thicket of mesquite trees. He can barely walk through them. And then he comes to a barbed wire fence. Impossible to crawl under, and too high to just jump over with all the equipment he's carrying. So he climbs a fence post and falls off, getting caught up in the thorny branches. Matt sees McIver and shoots at him. As Matt tries to crawl out of the branches, staring straight into the evil eyes of Ed McIver, and the cold steel of a gun. The first bullet blows Matt back. He's hit in the femur, shattering it into pieces. There was a long pause on the radio. And then the next thing we heard was an officer screaming on the radio. We got an officer down. Officer's been shot. I didn't even think. I just grabbed my medical bag and started running. Brandy was an army medic and is trained in emergency medicine. She rushes to the scene to help her brother in blue, who is bleeding red. Matt doesn't realize there are other officers nearby and more on the way. He clicks his radio for help, but all he gets is a busy signal. These officers are talking over each other and they're, they're all trying to key up on the radio at the same time. As Matt is lying in the brush, his body cam shows McIver's dark shadow approaching. 
the monster delivers another bullet straight into Matt's face. While we were driving, we keep waiting to hear that the scene was secure, that this officer was in the back of the ambulance, leaving the scene. Matt is losing a lot of blood. He's fast heading into shock. His body cam picks up voices. Matt is breathing heavily. So listen carefully. Are those the voices of the suspects claiming to finish him off? At the end of a wild high-speed chase, uh, I need to help. Bullets and blood. I'm down. Fort Worth police officer Matt Pierce is shot five times in the gun battle with Ed McIver Sr. Shots fired, shots fired. He's badly injured and trapped in the thick branches of mesquite trees. Matt is terrified. His body cam picks up voices of his fellow officers, but he thinks they believe he is the suspect. He summons every last ounce of breath to yell, Blue! Blue! I'm blue! The secret code word that reveals he's a cop. Where you hitting at? Everywhere. Moments later, Officer Brandy Camper, an Army-trained medic, arrives at the scene. He's laying on his side. He's sweating buckets. He's white as a ghost. And he's covered in blood. And he's looking at me going, Brandy, I'm bad. It's bad. I can feel my lungs filling up with blood. The ambulance isn't there yet, so they load Matt into a police truck. We need to get Matt out of there before we end up in another gunfight because he cannot afford to get hit one more time. He can't afford one more injury. So we load him up into the back of a Tahoe, and as soon as we took off, the Tahoe sank in the mud, and we're stuck. And Matt is screaming because his femur's broken. So now they carefully carry Matt on an open field so a helicopter can airlift him to the hospital. After surgery, Matt is put into a medically induced coma. But will he come out of it? The next thing I remember is waking up. He's awake and alive. And I saw my mom and I said, I said, mom, how long have I been asleep? For like two or three days? And she looks at me and she goes, oh no, try two and a half weeks. Now this hero cop is sharing with Crime Watch Daily his amazing story of the pursuit and the gunfight. He walks with a limp, the result of his broken femur and his thick beard covers the scars on his face. As we continue chasing him, he finds a dirt road with an open gate. Does it look like a scene from the Dukes of Hazard? There's dirt flying in front of me. I'm driving fast behind it. So as we're running through this mesquite thicket, I'm screaming at him. Stop right there! Stop right there! Forward, please! And we get to a barbed wire fence. So Ed McIver Sr. puts his belly on the fence and just flops over it, like, almost, like, almost look like an acrobatic move, as I have a whole belt full of equipment on. If I try and flip over that barbed wire fence like he did, I'm gonna be hung upside down, literally hung upside down from my belt, from that fence, and now I'm gonna look like a coyote caught in a barbed wire fence. Remember, Matt tried to jump from the fence post, but fell down. That's when he and the suspect exchanged fire. The first set of bullets actually hit, hit me in the leg, which broke my femur, so I've got two options. I can sit here and let him shoot me, or I can fight back and I'm not about to sit here and let some dude just shoot me and not shoot back. And in my body camera footage, you can see his shadow come into my camera. And then he reaches his hand in the bush and puts the gun to my head and just pulls the trigger. I can see blood just pouring out of my face now. I have the choice to make. Do I fight or do I accept defeat? And I'm too ornery and too stubborn to accept defeat, so we're gonna fight. Now Matt faces another terror, even more horrifying than the first. I laid there and I thought, this is gonna suck. I just survived an execution and my own guys are gonna shoot and kill me. I was scared to death. I thought that's really what was gonna happen. He's buried under the mesquite branches and all the other officers can see are his shoes. So they start challenging me. Show me your hands, show me your hands. Show me your hands, I will kill you. Show me your hands or we're gonna shoot you. So I'm trying to yell blue as loud as I can, but they can't hear me. So about the third or fourth time I tried to say it, I finally was just like, all right, this is my last ditch effort. I'm gonna take the biggest breath I can and I'm gonna yell it as loud as I can. And if they don't hear me, I don't know what to do next. So I, I took as deep a breath as I could with one function alone. 
and I got it out loud enough. Blue, 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 I'm blue. And that's when they finally realized that it was, it was me. Like his close friend Brandy, Matt too is trained in emergency medicine. He was a paramedic before he became a cop. Then all of a sudden, I hear uh, Officer Brandy Camper's voice. I was like, oh, thank God, she's here. I know that she knows exactly what to do to give me the best chance to survive, and I don't have to tell her how to do it. I don't think I've ever had a scenario or a training situation where a patient had nine holes in them. Matt survived, but McIver Sr. didn't. After Ed McIver tries to execute me, he turns and tries to kind of scurry up the hill to get, a, to, to get away from my body, because he think, I'm sure he thinks he killed me. Officers are at the top of the hill, and they engage him in a firefight and end up shooting and killing him. One suspect is down. We don't know where the other one's at. After three hours of searching, cops found his son, Ed Jr. He pleaded not guilty to charges of hindering the apprehension of a felon and tampering with evidence. Felonies that could get him 10 years in prison. Almost one year after bullets flew in Fort Worth, Matt bravely returns to what might have been his killing field. I used that post right there to, to come over the fence. And this is the bush I was laid up in right here. He hopes to be back on patrol next month. Coming back to work has been probably one of the hardest parts for me because I'm not one to know just to sit around and soak up, you know, the time off. I'm now back light duty for 20 hours a week. Now next month I'll be back for 40 hours a week. And then the plan is for me to return to a uniform mid-November. Matt is one tough cop. He wears blue, but he bleeds red just like you and me. He has a warning for any would-be thugs who dare to take him on in a gun battle. So the next time somebody draws a gun at me, if they think I'm going out without a fight, they got another story coming.